and welcome, James. Good evening, Kevin. You well? I'm very well. Uh, well, let's talk about... Uh, it's still uh, bubbling around in the background, uh, but it's an important story. Uh, Ray Robert Reeves, Rachel Reeves, attended an event at the CBI, you know, full of uh, business leaders, the country's be top business leaders yesterday, and uh, was shocked as she laid out, you know, the terms of her budget and why she thought it would be good for growth and good for the country. She was shocked that they listened in rather sulky, stony silence. Uh, and uh, she was even more st shocked uh, when the uh, chairman of the C CBI uh, uh, announced uh, his name is Rupert Soames. He said that uh, the government was treating the private sector uh, like a cash cow to be milked. And then the chief executive of McVitie's Biscuits told the conference uh, that after the national insurance hike uh, and the uh, £40 billion tax bomb from our uh, Chancellor, Chancellor of Doom, Rachel Reeves, uh, he said uh, the case for investment in Britain uh, was, and I quote, becoming harder to understand. Rachel Reeves incredibly, was shocked by this criticism. She has convinced herself that she's delivered a budget for growth. She's de delivered a budget for stagnation, for national commercial death, if you ask me. I mean, where does she get off thinking this is a positive budget that will be good for this country? Well, we now know that Rachel Reeves isn't an economist. You know, she's, she's Rachel from accounts. Um, <laughs> or, you know, you know, customer services. But there is a serious point to this. It was also mentioned within the, the office of the CBI that companies across Britain are like, at least half of the companies across the UK are likely to let go of some of their staff. So while Starmer is doing another false promise today saying they're going to grow the economy and increase jobs and fix employment and so on, that's not what the market says. It's not what businesses are saying. And in particular, it's small and medium enterprises. So if the Tories, you go back to 2010 onwards, were austerity against public services, this government, based on what they've done so far, is austerity against small and medium enterprises. They're going after our small businesses. They've gone after our farmers. If you look at some of the dire statements coming out of the hospitality industry right now, and that's connected to things like business rates and also energy prices, you know, considering that sector has been decimated a lot over the last four years since COVID onwards, there's some pretty dire statistics coming out of that. Yet, what's been forgotten about this government is that the bedrock of our economy is our small and medium enterprises. And actually, if they want to pay for the public sector, in particular, they're in fraud to the unions, where does the money come from? We cannot keep putting the money on the slate through quantitative easing, which they're continuing to do. There's a knock-on effect with that with inflation, but also the interest payments that the UK government are now making per year. It's north of 100, it's 100 billion. That's more than our entire education budget. Mm. And so we're sitting on a house of cards on the economy. And we've got a government that's pointing in the wrong direction, you know, enthralled to the likes of BlackRock and mega corporations, where Stormer was bragging about that. And yet, the real bedrock of communities, supply chains, and jobs is our small and medium enterprises. And all this government have done, nefariously so, is tax them through the roof in this budget and there'll be a price to pay. And it's, this is what, why the CBI and many businesses, not just independent businesses but scaled up, are concerned about this budget because you do not tax the private sector into growth. Yeah. What you do is the exact opposite. Yeah, I, I mean, what this Labour government... I, I feel, I said this last night, uh, I'd be interested in your take on it, James. I feel that we, uh, the long-suffering people of this country, are now trapped in a socialist social experiment whereby Keir Starmer, uh, Rachel Reeves and the cabinet crew are trying to change the fundamental nature of this country to make it a massive public sector based nation. And that budget was all about, as the uh, chairman of the CBI said, Rupert Soames, uh, all about milking the private sector, not only companies, but also individuals, people who work in the private sector, taking loads of tax from us and private businesses and big businesses, small businesses, and giving 
that money, ploughing all that money into the public sector. In effect, saying, you know, uh, to hell with old people, uh, to hell with the farmers, uh, to hell with everyone. We are taking your money and we're giving it to the public sector because we are socialists. That's what's going on here, I think. And I think that's what's really worrying because they're playing with our economy for dangerous ideological reasons. They are, but it's also it's a it's a that whiff of the politics of envy and trash the the private sector. But there's aspects of the private sector they're enthralled to, like the very very top of it, the mega corporations. Now, if you look at the farming example, there's a perfect example of what they're doing. It's inheritance tax, which has been explained by the NFU have run a good campaign on this, and they got their figures wrong at the Treasury as well. You know, up to seventy thousand farms will be affected by this, but it's not just about the farms. It's the supply chains that come off that. You know, it's the builders, it's the maltsters, it's the farm shops, it's the haulage companies. So if a, a sector within the private sector, farming is a perfect one, you know, hospitals is another, it's all the supply chains that get affected and therefore loads of other independent businesses get affected as well. This government, I agree with you, they're enthralled to two things, the unions and public sector, but not fixing the public sector, it's more about pay. And the second aspect, is about mega corporations as well, who come in and effectively asset strip all the assets that have been buckled mm -hmm. by the measures, not just of this government, but the previous government as well. And so we're in a terrible situation that we have a government who are economically illiterate, but they're driven ideologically. Yeah, they have, there's, there's hardly anyone in this government who has experience of reading a balance sheet or running a company. And that is a worrying thing. You need a sum of parts in government. You need people who understand the, the checks and balances between the private sector and the public sector. And at the moment, this government do not have it. And it's a dangerous game because without a strong um, small and medium enterprise culture, we have nothing in terms of the bedrock of our economy. And it goes back to that point. Ultimately, who then pays for the, for the, the public sector? unless you're actually doing more yeah. ratcheted up rounds of quantitative easing? Just, just for uh, the purpose of, of clarification, uh, you know, it's incredible to me that uh, this government has the temerity, Rachel Reeves, Keir Starmer, to suggest that this budget was a budget for growth. It's a budget for stagnation. It's a budget for commercial suicide. It will kill so many businesses. As you said, uh, she found out, old Rachel, yesterday at the CVI, that lots and lots of pretty big companies uh, are already not hiring anybody. They're already laying people off. Uh, this is stultifying. This is seriously dangerous to the commercial health of this nation. And yet we have these weird student politics automatons running this country who have convinced themselves that this is some kind of encouraging budget that will uh, propel this country towards growth. Where do they get off thinking that? It's ridiculous, but it's, it's more ideological claptrap as well. It's connected even to net zero. Look what's happened with Vauxhall today, Vauxhall vans. You know, there's over a thousand jobs potentially going there as well. And that is actually connected to some of their bad measures on net zero. So the drive in terms of two awards, electric vehicles, and again, punishment policies on petrol vehicles, the lack of demands on EVs and so on. It is directly linked to this zealotry within our government. And it's the same thing within, again, going back to farmers, with, in terms of the mass plastering of solar panels. It takes out prime agricultural land on an enormous scale. And there's one that's going through planning cycle in Norfolk. It's, it's pretty close to 5,000 acres. I mean, this stuff is incredibly worrying. Because it is driven by zealotry and it's wrapped around a sort of virtue contract about sort of save the planet or we've got to help the public sector mm. and so on. Yes, but we can't do it either properly unless we have a strong and functioning private sector. And this budget that largely was a punishment on the private sector and various other groups as well, for instance, students and pensioners, but fundamentally small and medium enterprises. Yeah. And that is why industry by industry, sector by sector, they're raising their alarm bells. Some, and then there's also business rates that are attached to this as well, which is going to savagely affect the hospitality industry as of next year. And there's going to be a lot of stories about what's happening with our hospitality industry. And I suspect the same sort of pressure by individuals who are working with that industry, and rightly so, just trying to stand up and call out the government because, same with farmers, 
they're worried about their actual existence. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's an appalling state of affairs that governments are creating that situation that we've got thousands of people within our private sector are worrying about their own futures. It's completely unacceptable. Uh, I don't want to hear from anybody uh, in the Luton area who works for Vauxhall Vans because uh, what, we're going to go to break in just a second, James, but what worries me about what's happened up there, they're closing the van production unit uh, with the cost of about 1,100 jobs. And the reason that this factory is having to close is because of these green diktats coming down from crazy Ed Miliband, the net zero secretary. They've got to produce a certain amount of electric vans and people aren't buying them. And so this company or the van section of Vauxhall has been driven into destitution and it's going to close. You know, this is really worrying stuff. Again, ideological political decisions affecting real life, affecting people's lives. 1,100 people are going to be out of work in uh, Luton.